Welcome to what is sort of a new series on the channel. So this is The Eve Approach and uh, this is going to be about us going to Eve inside of our The Final Approach save and you can see right now I'm building an Eve craft. I'm trying to build a craft that's going to take us to Eve or, or more accurately most of the things or all of the things in this next four episodes. This is our first tranche of launches and we're going to send about four missions, well sort of four missions. You'll see in the future why I mean sort of four missions. We're going to send four missions to Eve in our first transfer window and they're going to basically try and do um, a few different things to prepare for our longer term missions in Eve and so we've got to have a launcher for that and so I'm building this the upper stage there you can see is getting its own communication system little dish on the side there I thought it was quite clever and some solar panels so that we don't have to worry about power and communication to the upper compartments so there we go that is ready and uh, yeah what's our first mission going to be well we have a long-standing mission that we need to complete which is explore eve and this is not landing on eve straight away it is sending a crew there and bringing them back so our first mission is set a crew off to eve and bring them back now these episodes are going to be recorded in batches so that they can actually have multiple missions ongoing but this first flight the first launch that we do is going to be a crewed mission to eve and return now I could have sent one Kerbal, I could have done it really light, but I decided uh, that would be a bit crazy spending, you know, a couple of years in uh, in, in, a, in a single crew capsule thing. So I've got the uh, the two crew capsule there. I think it's part of, is it breaking out of ground or making history or something like that? You alternatively could use one of the, I think the onions are stock now, I'm not sure. You could stick them on the top and it would actually look quite cool. A little heat shield underneath. And then I forced myself to put that lander can on there because I couldn't, you know, for all Kerbal love ever put just two Kerbals in a craft with such a small capsule. So I gave them that. And then I, it can also act in my mind as like a mini science space because we're going to take a scientist. We're going to take a pilot. Can you guess which two are going to go? Um, yeah, one of them, one of them is uh, is Val and the uh, that's the pilot, obviously. And the second one, yeah, the scientist is, uh, is Thule because yeah, yeah. Uh, Val and Thule seem to go together for some reason. I don't think they're in a relationship or anything. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Um, so there we go. We're going to take our launch vehicle that we designed and put it underneath there. We're going to make sure that we've got communications and things like that set up as well as science equipment. Of course, Thule can reset all of that. And yes, I know I have put two goo canisters on there. Um, I put two on because it just balanced and it looked nicer. Okay, just lead me to it. Um, so there we go. I, I actually originally changed the launcher and removed its middle stage um, and then I had a look at the Delta V and thought if we have any problems um, I'd rather have too much Delta V and it wasn't costing as much more to, to put that middle stage in with uh, the extra engine so that's what we have done and that's now ready to go you know Eve Explorer 1 is off and you can see we, we're launching and we're actually I'll tell you a little bit about the launch vehicle while this one's going up so you can see they're very happy to be going up. They've obviously been a while since they've been doing anything uh, together or in, in fact in the program. So the first stage is four mainsail engines just stuck out a little bit on there. We actually, the reason I've got multiple sort of medium tanks in there is because I do not have access to the bigger ones yet. We need to get science for that. And so yeah, I, I would I would like to finish the tech tree and we're gonna use some of the science from our Mun Lab and our Min Lab to do that while we're traveling, but we also need to get a, a chunk of it from Eve and then we can actually build some bigger craft. So this is pretty much what I was limited to size wise. The tanks are, are limited like that. We had to use every bit of um, science we had to actually get the fairings this size so that we could actually launch some of this stuff. So there, our second stage is uh, two of the two nozzle engines and I cannot remember the name of them. I think it used to be the 303 or the 203 or the 103 or something like that. It's the original sort of Rockamax upper stage engine that you used to get in the very early versions or not very early, but the medium versions of Kerbal. And I've put two of them beside each other. And I think it looks quite cool. Actually, you, you have to you have to move them around a bit, but you can see you get four nozzles and it looks really cool. And then we've got another one of those on the next stage up. Um, and so we get into orbit and um, I am, of course, worried that we're going to send our crew to uh, to Eve and kill them. So, or they can't do the science properly. So one of the things I actually do in orbit is we actually we actually test a few things. We get Thule out, we do some of the science, we get him to run some of the, the different experiments. We get to see, can he move around the outside of the ship? Can he actually get to the command pod at the top and things like that? Um, can he transfer his science? Because I really like him to be based in that lower pod until we come back to Kerbin. 
just to represent that sort of semi-small science facility that we've got there. Um, and then, of course, as he's Thiuli, he has to go and uh, use his jetpack a bit, which uh, is interesting. And I also get a little glitch when I get him to try and hold on the first time there. If you rewind and have a look, he, he grabs on and then he actually gets teleported to the bottom of the pod, which is a bit of an odd one and I wasn't expecting. So there we go. He goes out on a little walk there and he gets back into the craft. And then it's just a case of waiting for the right time. And I will say the transfer window planner built into KSP now is very good, but I am pretty sure that it misses out some of the windows primarily because it's looking for, I think, um, your planet to be near the ascending or descending node to give it a nicer single burn to the planet. Now, if you want to get there quicker or more accurately, you want to depart more sooner you may want to actually look at the uh, the angles of the planets and do some little calculations of your own because I think you could probably get there at better times. I think, you know, our transfer window for this, there was one that was less optimal that we could have gone on. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we fire off that second stage, which is going to give us our initial push out of the uh, out of the sphere of influence, but it won't get us all the way. So we have to use that third stage, that upper stage now. Um, and that upper stage has a lot of delta v to it um again this craft i was debating whether i should have that middle stage that second stage or just use this upper stage and um it actually it it wasn't as as big a difference as you'd expect because you're not carrying those extra engines and things like that the whole craft actually became a little bit more effective um in the end i decided to go for this because it opens up some options at the end of the mission if everything goes okay that I thought would be quite interesting to do. And, and I still hadn't decided quite on the mission architecture, I suppose you could say, but I did know we were gonna to go to EVE, we we're gonna get around into orbit and then we we're gonna come back. I wasn't gonna do just a plane flyby into so, you know, interstellar space or anything like that. We were actually gonna to go to EVE, go into orbit, come back. I think it's sometimes a little better to, in fact, it's usually better to do that unless you get a, a really nice sort of um, resonance between planets where you can, you can do that and you can just do a flyby and come straight back. Um, so that's what we were aiming to do. Um, yeah, so we set off on our way. We've got all our burns done and uh, we've actually used the maneuver node planner for that and the uh, things like that, the car, the, the alarm clock. And all I had to do was just do a little bit of burning. I think it was it prograde just to, to bring us or a little bit retrograde actually. We'd actually overburned even though the node said we hadn't. I had to do a little bit of retrograde burning just to pull us into orbit. So I would always recommend that. Don't just assume when you finish the burn and it's perfect that it's right. Go to the map view have a look and often it will be it'll just be prograde retrograde burns you need to do so time passes i don't want you watchers flying through space we didn't do any uh, you know mid course corrections or anything we this went straight in to an encounter you saw that i could have done some changes to try and change our inclination but at this point i didn't think the inclination was a massive issue i quite liked the idea i was even tempted to put it into a polar inclination which i am very glad i didn't because you'll see why in a minute. So we capture round Eve. We've still got fuel in that second stage there, or the third stage. And, uh, and we put ourselves into the normal and we're gonna do uh, some stuff. I actually forgot to set any action groups upon any of the craft that I actually used in this set of transfers. So I actually went along and set some action groups up, which I then barely used, if I'm entirely honest. I think I because a lot of the craft didn't have action groups, I actually avoided using it, which was, um, yeah. Particularly this one, because Thiuli is getting out and collecting samples, this would be the one that actually having action groups is less important of because you're gonna have to click on them anyway. So yeah, so he gets out, he does his stuff. I actually forgot to do an EVA when I first got there. So uh, we got the EVA report as well after being in there. We collect all the samples. And one thing I started doing was I would, um, I'd collect the samples, I'd put them in the upper capsule and then um, I just check that I got all the samples, try again, and any that he couldn't put into the upper capsule, I put in the bottom capsule. Um, I could have transmitted a lot of science, and I did do some transmission. Um, in actual fact, I did some transmission after collecting other science, um, and that comes back later at the end when we actually look at the total science gain from this, this mission. I actually didn't get as much back at the very end as I would have liked because I actually got it part way through um, because we started transmitting things. So there you go, we're just gathering more stuff. And you can see I've started transmitting some of the science there. I, I started to realize, you know what, if if we have the opportunity to transmit it and it doesn't, you know, we can reset things and we don't lose anything, why would we not do that? 
So I start doing that, um, which again, it gives us big chunks of science, but it, it loses that big impact when you get your, your craft back at the end. And and yeah, so we go around in, in orbit a few times and then, um, and then I start to think, right, okay, we'll, we'll get as much science as we can. I don't want to, I don't want to science spam it. I don't want to spend too long doing this. And if this is your, your version, yeah, I'm sure you could put it in a polar orbit and you get all of the science from all the different biomes at all the different altitudes and you'd be wonderful. But I don't need to do that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have enough science to complete the, uh, the tech tree. And after that, it's just, you know, it's bonus for me. So we go up into the, the higher echelons of the uh, orbit and we start gathering things and we start transmitting science. And of course, we do have limited power on the, in the batteries, so that's that's a problem. And then we come back around and uh, we do it again and we get a bit more science and it, it does go on a bit. And, you know, I'm saying this isn't science spam, but, you know, it's been a while since I've been to EVE, so I thought we'll, we'll give this a go. Um, and then... Then I think to myself, right, we need to start thinking about returning. We need to, you know, plan our return. And I go to look at the return and it says, uh, you need to, you need to, you're in too high an inclination. Re, you know, get your inclination more equatorial. I think it actually says the inclination is too high. So I went, okay, I will fix that. That's not a problem. Actually, inclination fixing is probably a good thing because it helps us going back to Kerbin. So, you know what? I'll fix the inclination. That's not a problem. So we go out to our, um, I think it's our descending node, which is the furthest from the planet. Always go, if you're going to do this, always go to the furthest node if you can, because it's slower, which means you need less delta V to do it. So we do our burn. It takes a little bit of fuel, not too bad. I'm thinking it's not too bad. Still got a lot of fuel left. That's fine. Right, I go back again and look, and it says, oh no, we know your inclination is okay, but um, yeah, you're too eccentric now. We need you to, so I thought, okay, we will now circularize then and now in eve this is actually quite a big chunk of delta v because you can capture it eve quite easily into quite a highly elliptic orbit but circularizing it takes a big chunk so we spent a big chunk of delta v there and you can say i actually stopped halfway to see if i could still do it and i still couldn't so it's pretty much i don't know what the degree of uh, eccentricity it allows but i decided to basically bring it down to circular because after the first burn where it would been brought down significantly i went you know what let's just get this done because i needed to set this node and there we go when we get almost circular then we can set the node and you can see it's going to be a reasonably cheap transfer back to kerbin and we have a look and it's not too bad so we just got to sit in orbit now for a, a year or so I, I i digress it was it was a while the the crew did sit around for a while before we were ready to go and you know, this is the point where you think a station around the planet would have probably been a good idea. Um, but even then, you'd have had to basically known your, your transfer window times and things like that. So, yeah, we fire off that, that, that upper stage and it uses all of its fuel. And then we're on to our nuclear engines. Um, I'm really glad that we had the, the upper stage still attached there because it gave us that big push to start off this maneuver. And I don't, I don't like slow starts to maneuvers because... Um, I think you end up you, you end up it actually costs you more in the long term so that nice big push at the start really got us going and then the nuclear engine just tidies it up there and we are on our way back to curb and it's been a i say a flying visit to eve we've actually spent a year there the, the crew you know val and uh and Thule have spent a year around eve i'm sure they're getting on really well now because they've had so much to do they're, they're doing quite a bit of science but um I think in future we need to have people stop at even and maybe a nice space station or to live somewhere and then then we're just gonna have a look at our return now i was aware that we're coming in sort of polar ish but actually with a very high periapse and i don't really like that so what i actually did was i looked for where the the ascending and descending node were in in sort of interstellar space into solar space solar space anyway interplanetary space and um I want to basically do a burn there and i realized that actually it's pretty much right before we got to kerbin um, and it was actually quite hard to identify because of the fact that once you go through a planet's uh sphere of influence like this it tends to show you ascending and descending nodes of the subsequent orbits not the one you're on so it was a reasonably annoyance to find but i found the correct place and uh, we do this and we bring it in and i'm going to come in sort of polar but i try and do a little bit of burn you see here the final few bits of delta v, few meters per second, actually have a massive impact on the uh, on the orbit. And so, what my aim here is, I decide instead of going straight into the atmosphere, 
we're going to put ourselves into a circular orbit. And this was my plan all along. I, I wanted options to do with this craft. I like the idea of not just chucking the entire craft into the ocean, as it were. So we do this burn. And uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to come along. And as we come close to our periaps, we're going to do a combination of capture and inclination change. It's not massively efficient because we're actually at our, our, our fastest. But by combining the two, I get some of that back. We could have done a loose capture and then done our inclination change um, at the furthest point because by having our periaps on the equator like I had, I actually had the option of, of changing our inclination at the at the apoaps, which would have been as far away as possible and it would have been almost nothing. But we had delta V to spare and yeah, I quite like the idea of just doing this one burn to get this done. So we do that and we're now in a circular orbit and that's where the debate happens. I thought about do I want to uh, get them to go to the space station? The space station can't dock them because I don't have a docking port, but I could send up a claw maybe and have it grab the claw or I could send a craft up to grab it or anything like that. And we could keep this craft and maybe refuel it. And then I thought, actually, you know what? In my uh, reusable space program series, I actually had a nuclear craft a bit like this. And I brought it back to Kerbin and I never really did anything else with it. I never brought it really down to the surface, even though it had parachutes. Um, because I was always going to reuse it. Um, and I thought, you know what, we're going to do this. We're going to actually land this nuclear craft. Now, it has quite a bit of fuel on board, which is uh, heavy. It also has a heavy nuclear engine. And you will notice it only has one standard parachute. It has a couple of drugs, um, but it's also very pointy. Um, and so that means, yeah, this thing potentially could be a bit of a dart. It could, it could really really just slice through the atmosphere even even going sort of engine first which is what i would expect to happen i'd expect that heavy engine to orientate itself so it's going first it's still very pointy and it's one of the big issues i have with nuclear engines and returning from orbit so what you can see i've actually done is i've actually dropped us so we're just entering into the atmosphere and then i burn radially out and I burn radially out so that we actually drop our apoaps down as well. So I basically circularize the orbit at about 68 kilometers just in the atmosphere. And then I start to work my way down slowly. So I turn myself sideways like this. We let our, our um, periaps drop a little bit and then we burn radially out again. And that, that balances it out. It gives us a little push up and then uh, it keeps us lowering. We're trying to get our speed down as much as possible because we want to be able to use that nuclear engine high up in the atmosphere. When you get further down, it's completely useless. But I also don't want to come down too ballistic in its sort of approach. So now we're burning our, our engine and we're going through the, the heating phase. And you notice I've turned the nuclear engine down just a little bit to give it a little bit of thrust because I, I wanted to see what impact the uh, the actual air was having. And it was, it was slowing us down. And we did get, I got deployment around 10 kilometers up. I was actually at that point about to hit the button to separate the capsule. Um, and so we come down and you can see there, yep, we have got successful deployment of uh, parachutes, but this thing's going to use the nuclear engine as a braking stage. So there we go, down and safe, just we recover it and we actually get quite a range of stuff. We get we get a big chunk of science. I think we've got about, you know, almost almost 800 science off this, which isn't huge for Eve, but we transmitted an awful lot. And you can actually see the science science that we have is almost 8,000 now because of it, because of all the science we've been getting from the other missions and from uh, the stations. And so I can I can let you into a secret. I actually, after this, went to the stations in uh, around Minmus and Mun, and yeah, we got over 8,000 science because they, they loaded us up. So if you want to see the next steps around EVE, please, from me, until next time, have a great one.